Live from Santa Clara, California, it's theCUBE. Covering Open Networking Summit 2017. Brought to you by the Linux Foundation. Hey, welcome back everybody. Jeff Frick here with theCUBE. We are in Santa Clara, California at the Open Networking Summit 2017. Uh, really happy to be joined by my co-host for the next couple of days, Scott Rainovich. Um, and we've been talking to a lot of providers and technical people, but now we want to talk to customers, right? We love talking to customers and we're really excited to have Rishesh Jetty. He's the SVP of Head and R&D for the Americas for Amadeus, which is a big travel company. Welcome. Thank you so much, Jeff. Thank you, Scott. So, uh, like I said, we would love to talk to practitioners. So, you're out on the front lines, you're, you're seeing, you know, all this kind of talk of software-defined and software-defined networking. From your point of view, how real is it? Where are we on this journey? What, 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 what do you see from your point of view? Super real. Have you searched for a flight lately? I have searched for flights. Uh, excellent. <laughs> um, then I can, I'm proud to tell you that uh, your flight search very likely was powered by Amadeus and um, it's running on a software-defined data center completely. So this stuff is real. We are, uh, I believe, one of the, the first companies to have actually taken this from you know, what was a, a very strong academic kind of research project onto like the startup ecosystem. But we're actually out there deploying it, running real world business, uh, using a very purposeful and deliberate software defined strategy. And, 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 and it's interesting because you said before we got on camera that you guys are actually you know, very active participants in the open source movement and development of this stuff. You, you're not just kind of a a participant waiting in the wings for this stuff to get developed. I mean, absolutely, and that's to me, that's one of the ways in which, um, you know, if you're serious about open source, uh, you have to use it. You can't just talk about it. You can't just, you know, say it looks like a nice idea. And you have to get out there and, and get your hands dirty and do it. But the other thing also is you have to contribute back. I think that's a big tenet of the open source community. And, uh, you know, we all, and certainly the company, we grew up and we've seen tech evolve through the ages. And a, a big part, especially in the last you know, 10 years or so, has been this, the open source movement and it's contributing back. It's one of the reasons I'm here, it's one of the reasons um, uh, the conference organizers invited me is to actually talk about how we use open source and software defined uh, strategy for our uh, technology. That's cool. Um, so where do, you, where do you run this software? You run it private cloud, public cloud? Do you guys build your own data centers? What, so how do you run quick, it? Quick history lesson or, or quick history? You know, well, yeah, I mean, we should probably back up. What kind of the, first off, where, where's Amadeus today for people that aren't familiar with right, the company? So, uh, we're actually a 30 year old company. We're celebrating our 30th birthday this year. Uh, the company was started in the late 80s as a consortium between four uh, leading European airlines, Lufthansa, Air France, uh, Iberia, and Scandinavian. And over the years, you know, so we started off, which was very typical at that time, as a uh, mainframe shop. And uh, that's where a lot of our core systems were built. Uh, we are a big provider of technology in general to the travel industry, even though we were founded by airlines. So to put it in perspective, we carry about 95% um, of the world's scheduled commercial uh, seats, airline seats, uh, on our platform. 95%? 95%, so we work with- Are available to purchase. You, you know, obviously 95% of the purchases don't go through your system. Correct, they are available. Okay. Uh, we are used by over 90,000 travel agents, retail travel agents, corporate travel, online travel, um, and we work with over, like I said, 700 airlines uh, to offer their inventory. So chances are, you know, that when you, if you travel on an airplane, you know, uh, very good chances that our software was used to make the reservation. We also have airline IT systems and hotel IT systems, and we work with airports, and this is where we do departure control, flight management, baggage reconciliation, a lot of the back-end uh, processes. And we started the, the company essentially runs, as we write our own software, we offer it as a service from day one, so we are one of the oldest software as a service providers in the industry, uh, and obviously when we got started to do that, you had to own your own infrastructure. So we are pretty good at it, we have very strong, um, kind of technical chops, we uh, have a large data center outside Munich Airport, and uh, a bunch of smaller data centers all over the world. And what we're doing now is really, you know, very uh, deliberately making the journey towards uh, a cloud, both our private cloud, so taking our own infrastructure, virtualizing it, and making it available as a service for our own applications, and then where it makes sense to leverage, uh, you know, public cloud infrastructures where they're available. Mm -hmm. So different apps and different clouds, is that different apps, different clouds, based on uh, customer preferences. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Uh, the core reservation booking engines, they are, they are on 
on-prem in our own private cloud uh, because they do have a lot of, uh, we do have a lot of regulatory security, privacy you know, considerations. So that stuff we, we keep uh, kind of close where we can keep a very watchful eye on it. Uh, but there are a lot of transactions. We're also talking about, you know, um, the volume of searches has grown up, right? Obviously Google's seen a lot of search volume. If you look at our business, it used to be when you wanted to book a flight, you'd go to a travel agent and they would look at a bunch of flight options and, and you'd pick one. Um, and the, about 20 years ago, it was, we call it the look to book ratio. So you'd look at 10 to 20 options and you'd book one. You want to guess what it is today? The look to book ratio Three. was 20 to one. 20 to one. It's got to be way higher. It's got to be 80 to one. Uh, it's more like 1,000 to one. Oh. A thousand to um, one. A thousand to one. And yeah. you know, uh, it's partly people like you and I who are, have a spare moment and have a vacation in mind and we are looking at options. But keep in mind, anytime you search, it has to come into our systems. We have to configure the, the journey, we have to price it, we have to make sure it's available before we offer it up yeah. to you. Right? So it's very uh, transaction compute intensive, even before it touches any of the backends where we do core kind of booking and, and passenger processing. And so to handle that scale, you know, that's, those are the kind of uh, very logical applications that make sense for the public cloud. And uh, those are the ones that we've looked to move. Uh, certainly for customers, we are a global company, we have uh, customers all over the world. Some customers want to have some of these uh, systems you know, closer to their geographic locations. So we look at all use cases kind of. So that's amazing to think of. You know, these things have so changed behavior in the way that we interact. I, I assume that 20 to one was a function because you would sit down Exactly. You, know, you sit down at your desk, and get time to book that flight, and you know maybe you don't get it done that day. You come back two or three times, but as you said, now it's it's grabbing little bits of time throughout the day whenever we can. But do you do you get paid like on some uh, a regular subscription, or do you get paid on the transaction? Does um, that just increase your overhead, <laughs> whatever the ratio I twenty mean, to a thousand is? Absolutely, no. Our our business model has been very consistent from day one. Uh, we get paid on the number of uh, bookings we make and the number of people that board aircraft, I mean, roughly speaking. Right, we have other right, smaller right. lines of businesses, but right. those are our two main revenue drivers. So if you, we see a lot of transaction volume up front, but um, it doesn't translate to a booking, which logically it won't. Um, yes, that's no extra revenue for us, but we still have to service the, that volume because that's eventually, the funnels mm -hmm. just gotten wider. Right, right. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And so it makes sense to do that in the most uh, cost efficient manner, but without compromising you know, uh, quality, without compromising uh, speed, you know, because, I mean, if you're um, like me, you know, if you have to wait for, for more than two or three seconds, you're like, ah, oh, I'm moving <laughs> oh, on. Oh, two <laughs> seconds, <laughs> it's milliseconds, isn't it? <laughs> Absolutely. I still, and by the way, I still don't always find the flight I want, so like, where are those extra flights? Can you provide those for <laughs> service? Yeah, that extra 5%, <laughs> those are under. That, under you know, that's a very different thing. It's got nothing to do with open source and kind of what we're talking about here, but there's a lot, of, a lot we are doing in there from an uh, engineering perspective, which is looking at, for example, machine learning algorithms, and what you said is actually a very common um, complaint, is how do I find kind of the right set of flights, and more importantly, if you have certain preferences, you know, with airports or airlines or loyalty programs or yeah. time of day, you know, how do I provide you kind of context sensitive results, right? And uh, we are doing a lot of kind of core R&D work for that, but our customers are doing amazing work as well. You know, Kayak is, is one of our customers, uh, very close to kind of our offices in, mm -hmm. uh, in the Boston area, right? And, and, and they do uh, pretty amazing work in, in, in terms of getting that context right and, and applying machine learning technologies and artificial intelligence. It's very, very early days, but yeah, yeah. very exciting, very promising. Yeah, one of, one of the cool features I like are these like fare alerts. I don't know if you use them. It tells you, predicts, you know, this is going to go up, you better book now, or it's, you know, wait. Uh, do you, you guys do that sort of thing too? Uh, our customers do that. So, yeah. you, you know, we have a very simple model. Our customers are you know, the travel agencies online, uh -huh. uh, the American Expresses, you know, the Expedias, uh, the meta searches like you yep. know, Kayak, Skyscanner, et cetera. The airlines themselves, whose product we host in our system and we sell. So, a lot of our engineering work is done into offering kind of core innovation so that they can offer products for people like you and me, their customers, you know, that are, that are the best products out there. So we focus on enabling them, uh, and then at an operational level, we like you know try to do it in the most efficient manner and the most uh, you know future proof that we can we can think of. What so, about uh, sorry? Right. What, what about security? I mean, it sounds like a lot of sensitive data changing hands here, right? Where people are going to sit on an airplane, where they're going. What uh, you must 
have incredible uh, security demands on your on your data now. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, you 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 understand. It's one of the areas. Obviously, it's it's of paramount to us. And uh, I mean, the good news is, look, we've been in this business for 30 years. Uh, we have really deep domain expertise in, in that. Uh, and also, you'll understand why I don't wouldn't want to talk too much about what we do and how we do it. But uh, absolutely, that's one of the you just lock the, it down. The prime drivers <laughs> of uh, you know everything we uh, we think. You know, all the way from application design to um, things like you know uh, the infrastructure planning and design to the physical level. I mean, everything you can think of, and probably a couple of things you may not think oh, of. Hopefully, hopefully a few things we didn't think of. So, so where do you where do you go next? It sounds like you know you you're enabling a lot of the innovation on your partner side. You just mentioned you know kayak and people writing some of the machine learning and, and, and AI algorithms to help the end traveler you know find what they're looking for. What are you guys concentrating? You said you've been at it for 30 years. Um, what are some of the next big hurdles that you're looking to take down? Um, you know, it's, it's wonderful. I think being uh, close to our customers, and one of the reasons I'm in, in Boston, we are a European company, we're actually headquartered in Madrid. Our uh, core engineering team, our central engineering team is in France. Uh, the reason I'm in, in Boston and my team's in, in Boston is, you know, we are, we've started doing a lot of business here in North America, and we, we try to stay very close to our customers, and uh, when you listen carefully, um, and that's why we have two ears and one mouth, is you know, hopefully try to listen a lot. We, you, you do see their pain points, you do see what, where they're going with kind of their business, and it gives us a chance to have a front row seat in, in designing new products that they can use. So to me, it's, it's, two, it's kind of two pronged. One is we want to offer the best technology we can to our customers at the best price point we can. You know, and obviously uh, by now you've figured out it's mission critical stuff has to always be on. So keeping those kind of uh, boundary conditions in mind, we want to be uh, the, the best technology provider. And then we want to innovate. So one of the things uh, I'm seeing at this conference, there's a lot of uh, friends from the service providers who are talking about 5G technology. And so with connected cars, with virtual reality, I mean these are all trends that are going to impact us as travelers in a positive way. And so uh, we have a dedicated kind of innovation team across all our business lines. We do a lot of work with kind of academic institutions, with ETH in Zurich, with MIT here, um, you know, close to my uh, my office in Boston, and um, I, there's just a chock full of uh, possibilities in terms of what can what can be done. All right, well, I'll give you the last word. Impressions on the show, and you know, what do you get out of a show like this? Why is it important for you to come? Oh, it, it's uh, amazing. I mean, this morning uh, Martin Posado was there, and you know, and and he's the one. He's called kind of the granddaddy of uh, soft of uh, Software-defined networking <laughs> and virtualization. It's not you know, that it's, old yet, but he's going to like seeing true. that clip. <laughs> well, I read that at the Guardian, so you know it was, um, it was or one of the, the newspapers. But you know the the fact is, uh, you know, we use NSX for virtualization in our entire data center, and we have close to 20,000 infrastructure devices. Um, all our computers virtualized, 100 percent of it, right? And it's all using um, NSX from VMware, right? Now, this was a this was a brilliant idea by. A uh, you know extremely intelligent and persuasive graduate student at Stanford, you know, 15 years ago. That is, as he announced this morning, is a billion-dollar business today, right? And we are actually using that technology, and it's, it's very real to, to process all of this. So it's great to to be able to see what people like him, uh, I mean, from Google, is a great partner of ours. We use Kubernetes for kind of the container uh, uh, deployment uh, strategy for our uh, cloud network. We hear him speak about what they're thinking about in terms of investments and how the network and it's go is going to essentially drive the, the movement of, uh, of data. I mean, it, it's just a phenomenal to get that thought leadership. Um, I'm obviously very honored and privileged to be uh, presenting to this audience you know, and to share our thoughts and what we are doing. So, uh, And just to see a lot of the, the buzz around here and, and what wonderful ideas are are happening in, in the valley. This is uh, where so much action is always going on. Great, great, great summary. Well, uh, glad you could take a few minutes to stop by the cube. It's completely my pleasure. Uh, thank you very much. Great meeting you, and Thanks, have a great Rishesh. rest of the show. All right, he's Rishesh. He's Scott. I'm Jeff. You're watching the cube from Open Networking Summit 2017 in Santa Clara. We'll be back after this short break. Thanks for watching. People obviously know you from Shark Tank, but the Hertzbeck Group has been really laser focused on cybersecurity. So I actually helped to bring a product called Checkpoint to Canada, firewalls, URL filtering, that kind of stuff. But you're also